depends on the level of commitment you're willing to make to yourself and to that business, what you actually want to stick with. Um. I'm calling. Yeah, maybe I'm selfish. I'll talk. I want you to myself. I can't help it. Oh my. Yeah, maybe I'm selfish. You're my lady. Hey y'all. So I am back with another video, and this video is pertaining to all things after you graduate with your license in cosmetology. I do have my phone again just because this is my note taker um so in this video as you can tell by the title is everything pertaining to finding a job after cosmetology school what's your perfect place and where you actually want to be located if that interests you keep on watching so as you can tell i'm in a new setup uh, i'm not at work today i'm actually in my room and we are still rearranging her and getting things to upgrade her okay <laughs> first thing i'm going to try to keep this cute simple and sweet um i only have seven topics to kind of talk about pertaining to how to find the perfect job um if you watch any of my previous videos you guys know that i worked from home for a period of time i worked in a salon setting for about a year and a half in total but i just didn't see fit for I wanted to do um, and so I moved back home moved back into my home and just took my clients from there for a period of time until I found my perfect sweet space that was in a good location affordable and honestly like everything just like checked my box the space that I am in now so I'm grateful for that let's jump right on in first thing being first um, the question that I feel is most important is what do you love to do um, what do you love to do is very, very important and where you'll be located. The thing you love to do is more than likely a salon setting that you can find that specifically specializes in something that you love. Um, overall, I mean, if you just love hair, beauty, and everything in the cosmetology industry, but definitely think about that as far as finding a space to start taking your clientele and building and growing from. So the the easier it is for you to figure out what it is that you actually love to do, the easier it will be to decide which salon is best for you. So the second thing would be, what do you want to actually master in? So what is it that you actually see for yourself that you want to master in? What do you love to do again? Um, and what do you want to get really, really good at? And what do you want to offer? What do you see for yourself as a stylist? kind of had a vision for myself of what I wanted to offer, what I wanted to do, what I found passion in doing, which was natural hair and protective styling. Um, and just overall, the health and integrity of our natural hair and how to maintain it, how to keep it growing, how to keep it healthy and do all the things, all the fun things that we want to do with it. I knew that's what I wanted to master in and become a master at, which is what which is what I pursued um, and I tried to find the salons. We didn't really have, we don't really have many, many salons um, here. We have stylists, we have master stylists here, but depending on where the location is, what the environment is like, I just chose that it was probably best for me to just kind of create my own space for myself um, because that's what I would be most, most comfortable doing. But if you want to master in coloring or if you want to master in cutting, maybe a good start would be so for example if you want a master in cutting maybe a good start would be working at a chain salon so anywhere like great clips um super cuts walmart salons those are definitely options for beginners because not only are those type of salons available to just anybody um they're everywhere and you have room to grow so when you go into super cuts or great clips you kind of know what you're getting or what they have to offer not being you know an upscale salon or a luxury salon so when you go you're only paying say twenty dollars for a haircut whereas you will go to a private salon private owned salon and you might pay ninety dollars for a cut depending on what type of cut and style you're getting so you can definitely look into something like that that's actually what i started with i was actually looking into a walmart salon but because of the requirements i wasn't able to quite meet it because my situation was a little bit different but i was definitely interested not only did it give me the option to kind of grow and just start to learn about the industry in itself but it also gave it also would have gave me an opportunity to experience and have the knowledge of different hair types textures um, but that 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 was something for sure that I was re really 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 interested in um, when I first started but again my situation was a little different so that wasn't available to me at the time um, but don't knock it 
do not knock it because those jobs are definitely jobs and the plus about those when you're first starting it's just like an hourly job it's just like a fast food retail or any office like it's it's the same thing you get paid hourly definitely think about what you want to master in and then look for salons and see what they have available or what type of positions or maybe apprenticeships or assistants whatever the case is just look into your options number three being if you have any history with clients um as far as outside of school whether you're taking clients from home like i did or whether you're experimenting and just taking models um and doing little side end jobs just depending on what it is but i definitely say like if you do have any clientele experience or if you have any experience outside of beauty school that will also kind of help gauge where you probably should look or what would be the best place for you to go depending on your level of experience that also could be factored in into where you actually want to start at so if you have no experience it's best to start at a teaching salon where they welcome student um, graduates to come in and to grow with the company or grow with the business or if you're a little advanced and you've been taking clients and you know kind of your routine and how you want to really go into the field and what your goal is that was a big help for me because i knew i just wasn't like a newbie completely so the fourth thing is definitely important location where are you located and where do you want to get where do you want to gain and start building your clientele from so where i'm from it's real small I'm from a real small city it's i mean it's a lot of stylists here don't get me wrong um but we don't have as many salons to choose from it's either all kind of like white salons or it's black salons it's a couple of salons where there is a good mix but again i i wasn't in the in the position or i wasn't in the location in my personal opinion i never found a happy medium um and it was just some things like i didn't see for myself so it was just some things i was just like mm, i don't really see that for myself or the services i was offering which was protective styles weren't really offered in these salons um and this was more of a traditional hair salon so it was more just dealing with either straightening the hair um relaxing the hair cutting the hair coloring the hair and i knew i wanted to do more work with natural hair and i wanted to do more work in natural hair um and it took me a little bit longer so whereas everybody else is fast paced and moving in a fast pace i'm taking you know five to six hours with each client and that wasn't like it honestly it's not average for a stylist to take that long unless it's like a color correction or um a color transformation definitely think about where you are located if you will have to commute i think that'll be worth it um i definitely thought sometimes about going about an hour away because it was a bigger city bigger opportunity bigger clientele bigger market to just really grow and expand but again it was something else that wasn't available to me at the time starting out that is something to factor in though so if you have the ability if you have the availability um if you have the means to do so definitely look if you have to commute i think it'll be worth it especially in the beginning stages of building your clientele and just seeing really how much is out there and how easy it'll be if you master in something specialize in just a couple of things figure out what your niche is in the cosmetology industry in the beauty industry and bank on that and work and work and work and work and promote yourself okay so so number five being commission or booth rental so depending on how you want to approach your first salon experience um working in a business for a business whether you want it to be commissioned or you want it to be booth rental so commission essentially averages around 35 to 65 percent i believe um and i googled and the average is 45 percent is that's what i got online and i am based in michigan so the average is 45%. I've also heard 60-40. So you get 60% of the service and the business gets 40% of the service. The commission is basically where the salon books your appointments. They make sure your books stay full. If there's any walk-ins, if there's any call-ins, whatever the case is, they'll put just anybody on your books and you get that service. So sometimes it could be something where the master stylist or the stylist with the most experience they get what they want to get and then because you're the beginner you'll get either the simplified services or you'll kind of get like the leftover what people probably don't want so you might get the haircut or you might get the root touch up i said that also depends on your level of experience 
commission might work out best for you starting out because booth rental is definitely a commitment you have to make to yourself and to that business owner or the manager. You just like housing rent, um, car note payments, phone bill payment, like everything. It's just, it's the exact same. It's just another addition to bills that I have to pay per month. Not mad at it. If you reach productivity, this is just things that I've researched and I've heard um, through different cosmetologists, but and if you reach the level of productivity that the salon has set, the quota essentially, then you have a chance to increase your income your rate and the pay that you actually receive booth rental average is 150 to 250 dollars where i am um and it's it, it it's, it's it really depends on again location it depends on how many people are there it depends on what you have how big of a space you have how many stylists are there um what amenities you're offered it all factors into that price you have to shop around in a sense to see what would be best versus commission or booth rental um if you have no experience obviously commission will probably be the easiest for you to grow learn and master something and find your niche while you're growing and mastering whatever it is that you decide to depends on the level of commitment you're willing to make to yourself and to that business what you actually want to stick with um and that is the plus about being in an open salon setting versus a sweet space you have so many different people you can learn different techniques from and that's what i do appreciate about the traditional salon setting not to say i love my sweet space i absolutely love it so number six to me is really important um what's your vibe so i knew because again i say it in like almost every video i'm an introvert i'm very much to myself i'm very much not shy but just observing i'm very sensitive to energy i'm very sensitive to um vibes just like the energy that people give off very sensitive to it very in tune and very just much like no ma'am not happening um because i don't want to have to act out of character or dumb down myself to fit into a specific area or vibe that people have going and that is also how i knew I would just be the type of person to work in my own space and my setting because I like to set the atmosphere. I like to set the tone. I like to be intentional about my work day. I like to set the vibe as cliche as it sounds, but I work best when I'm able to do that. So I found myself being more so towards working with myself for myself. I just seen things that I wasn't really that, you know, in tune with or just really vibe with well, vibe well with, you know, so um that was definitely something i had to consider like um growing or not like what do you really like what would be the most productive environment for you if you are a social person a traditional salon may be really really perfect you know what i mean um even if you are a little introverted like myself you could do i did a salon setting for about a year and then i did another salon setting for i want to say three months um so I have my experience in a traditional setting, uh, in a traditional salon setting with multiple stylists on the floor. Okay, so um, my lighting changed just a bit, as y'all can tell. Sorry about that. I had a little guest. Say hey. Hey. Right there, that's mom. Hey. Okay. <laughs> I was finishing off saying um, I, was, I was in the salon for a period of time, but I knew that wasn't my vibe. I actually made a commitment and essentially I guess I manifested and just talked about up until it literally fell into my lap and the owner of the actual salon suite I'm at now kept reaching out, kept reaching out, kept reaching out. And I was just like, you know what? One day I said, okay, I'm going to schedule a tour. I went in and absolutely fell in love with it. Perfectly placed. We were in a, we're in a plaza, um, I guess you could say the shopping district. So most of the stores most of the food places um the mall the movies is all over in that vicinity so it's great for um building clientele even though i kind of have my clientele established and the last thing and i'm gonna be quiet because this is a little one thing um expand your vision so like even though you might see yourself being this this one way or being this type of stylist still give yourself room enough to grow and expand in the industry because like i said in my last video if you did not see that one i'm dropping the link down below so make sure you check it out but like i mentioned in my last video it's a five five hundred and eleven billion dollar <laughs> industry what she said so like i said in my last video it's a 511 
billion dollar industry so there is so much you can do there's so many ways you can go about it there's so it's just it's 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 forever evolving and it's forever growing so there's room enough for all of us um and it's money to be made so is you gonna make it or what expand your vision expand what you see for yourself and just let your mind kind of be creative and depending on where you are in that first year you might not be in the same position or thinking even about the same thing you were thinking in the beginning in a year or two or three because granted i seen like i know what my passion is and i know what i love most about hair in the cosmetology field and being a licensed cosmetologist but i'm noticing i'm kind of changing with the times as well not saying i'm keeping up with trends or i'm trying to be a trendy hairstylist because i don't believe in that another topic for another day for another video but i am noticing that some things are sparking my interest a little bit more than others that i never would have thought like i would try to pursue or i would try to learn about or maybe take classes um but just expand your vision and that's pretty much it for this video so the third video to this specific series as far as becoming a licensed cosmetologist will be coming after this one i hope i inspired you i hope i could encourage you in this video and just like i said in my last one let me be your virtual mentor let me be your big sis your bestie whatever you want to consider it let me be that for you because i wish i did have somebody like myself honestly and the few people i see here on youtube sharing their actual experiences that's relatable that's realistic and that like i feel like it's just like me or was just like me hope 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 you enjoyed this video and if you want to see more of my content or more t helpful tips or things that help me build my business and continuously have helped me build my business then stay tuned make sure you subscribe leave me a thumbs up if you want no pressure um and drop a comment below if there's anything you do want to add um and that's it i will see y'all in my next video Streets so catch me at shows, I'm calling.